All right, Shalom. I want to start by giving all praise, honor, and glory unto you. How by Hashem, how is Shah, by Hashem, how is Shah, the abundance of the apostles and the elders of great millstone. And Shalom, once I came out to preach the word in sincerity and in truth. Yeah, I just wanted to do a lesson on our prophecy. More prophecy to come to pass. We already know what Yahweh Shah spoke about 2,000 years ago, as well as the other prophets and men of the Lord. You know, they spoke about big uh, famines, worldwide famines that were to take place. Um, uh, uprisings of the people, wars, rumors of wars, you know, riots, clash, you know, clashing um, of, of, of the different nations, World War Three, pestilence outbreak. And, you know, one key element with the uh, scripture says is uh, to watch as well as pray. So we have to constantly watch and monitor what's going on on a day to day basis uh, throughout the news, you know, through RT, Al Jazeera. You know, you have your local news. You know, um, then, like I said, then you have your alternative news media sites. Like this, this is an alternative news media site. And I do a, a good deal of lessons on this site. You know, I check out other feeds in different locations, local news, so on and so forth. But I like this site because, you know, they, they uh, stick it out to you. You know, not trying to, um, you know, stroke your emotions, you know, and... Uh, alleviate the facts they just come with the you know the full-scale truth and this is uh one major prophecy you know look it says 55 million people face famine as covid ravaged economies fail to meet funding goals right so a lot of these different nations they need the finances in order to sustain uh from all these different jobs closing down for, from this mass amount of people uh at home and and you see that these people, majority of the people are uh, in a situation where they need a handout from the federal government, all right, from the government on a whole, all right. That's why you'll see these different food bank drives around the world, and you'll see they they'll be people be lined up down down there to the highway. And I've seen that in California, you know, not f personally, but you know, you can actually watch, you know, you'll see the clips, and then uh, you can actually see the the photos. And you'll see people lined up literally to the highway to actually get food. And these are the same people a couple of months back. They they might have had a six-figure job, you know. You know, they might have, uh, you know, were living pretty much well, well off. But since this uh, e economic collapse uh, occurred, so many people got furloughed. So many people got uh, straight up unemployed, you know, and... um basically people are uh, in, a, in a frenzy and this is in america america is really honestly one of the most established countries within the world so how much more of these other nations that were never doing too well that were never you know <laughs> you know i'm not trying to sound like a as 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 great as america trying to sound like a I'm pro like a damn democrat or republican is never as great as america you know but it's true you know, a lot of these, these third world nations, these nations that don't have uh, proper drinking supplies, uh, drinking water, they don't have proper sewage. Now they have to deal with this famine outbreak. Oh, man, we're seeing that, uh, you know, we're seeing these prophecies come in uh, full circle, man. So we'll read a little bit on it. It says more than 55 million people in seven countries are in desperate need of COVID-19 related famine relief. That is according to a new report from international charity Oxfam entitled Later Will Be Too Late. The report details how 55.5 million people in seven countries, Yemen, Afghanistan, Nigeria, Burkina, Faso, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and Somalia are living in a severe to extreme levels of food insecurity or even fam famine conditions thanks to the large, largely... Thanks, excuse me, thanks largely to the fallout from the coronavirus pandemic. In March, the UN called for $10.3 in emergency funding to deal with the worldwide humanitarian impact the pandemic was expected to bring. And that's this is one of the major reasons why they say, and it's, it's, it's totally true, that not, not, there will be no new uh, normal. But this is the new normal. Nothing will ever go back to the same again. Majority of these jobs that have shut down they lost full momentum they need a a, a full-scale bailouts you know they basically got to get you know um you know f refunded resurged in order to uh 
actually uh, get get back on their feet. And a lot of these different places, then you see these these airlines are shut down. You see a lot of um, food food stores, all right, grocery stores, you know, being uh, shut down. And it's a, a lot of people are uh, like I said, unemployed. Unemployment is at a uh, you know is at record breaking heights. You know, but continuing on, it says. Unfortunately, it has received barely a quarter of what it has asked from for from donors, right? And and these different governments know that they're not, they can't possibly take care of the welfare of each and every citizen. It's gonna stretch the government too thin, and that's how a, a country will collapse. So they're gonna have to stick to um, you know, stick to the guns, so to speak. They're gonna have to basically restrict uh. Massive amount of funds they're gonna fund to the best of their ability, but they know they they can't you know over um overdo themselves you know for lack of a better term you know and they're gonna actually uh, look to uh, neighboring allies for more help. But guess what? You looking next to you when the person next to you was doing just bad. They need funding. All right, which this is becoming a debt based world. It's not just like a cu- couple countries are in debt. To other major nations, no, the whole world is um in a in a state of a uh, frenzy, man. Everybody's dealing with this world. That's why a, a pandemic, all right, pan represents all. You know, pan is a um the uh, prefix. I think it's all, and the demic basically goes into the you know, like you have an epidemic, you know, you have a pandemic that basically goes into the sickness, you know, roughly paraphrasing, but it goes into um you know all people basically contracting the uh, sickness and the illness and it's basically being in all quarters of the world and it's a lot of countries that have been affected by this COVID-19. All right. It says, oh, and what do they say? Mainly so-called blacks, so-called Latino and women. All right. But it says, unfortunately, it has received barely a quarter of what it has asked for from donors. Every sector, including gender-based violence, Protections, 27%, well, the 58% was funded from the gender-based violence, and 27% for protection, health, 27%, and water. Sanitation and hygiene, 17%, are chronically underfunded. But the worst underwritten parts of his coronavirus response plans are a security, are food security, 11%, and nutrition. Nutrition is at a 3%. Um, you see this? Indeed, in five of the seven countries noted, the U.N. has received nothing at all to deal with the crisis. Oxfam called the international community response dangerously inadequate. And these are inadequate numbers, man. So, like I said, these different nations looking to do the best that they could do. The best that they could do is is definitely fall short from being good enough. It's not good enough. A lot of people are going to basically going to be behind the eight ball, so to speak. They're going to be... They're going to get the uh, shit into the stick, you know. They're going to, uh, you know, directly deal with this outbreak and they're no longer going to trust the government. You know, they're no longer going to, re- re- you know, rely on the government f- for, um, well, you know, a majority of people are going to still rely on the government for help and assistance. But what the scripture speak about, these different nations are going to curse their God and look upwards. It's going to be a lot of people that's going to be wake- waking up around this time. All right. Scripture says also that uh, many shall be willing in the day of our power. Right. When your stomach is touching your back, you see these different nations marching to the battlefield, you know, and it also speaks about a lot of these women husband being slayed during the war. And you see these prophecies that the men of the Lord been speaking about for decades coming to pass. Then you're going to see who has the full scale truth, man. All right. So it says the committee for W. Uh, uh, WFC, the World Food Security, must raise the alarm at the UN that famine is imminent on its watch and not enough is yet being done to stop it. We need a fairer and more sustainable food system that supports small-scale producers. Years of negligence means that millions upon millions of people remain unnecessarily vulnerable to shocks like COVID, climate change, and conflict, said Oxfam International Interim Executive Director Shima Vera. A little bit more officials estimate suggest that around 1.1 million people have died from COVID-19. Globally, since its emergence in China late last year, 
While the U.S. has seen the most cases and deaths overall, it is now countries in the global south that are of the most intense hotbeds of the viruses with Brazil, Mexico, and India right behind the U.S. There are currently 800,000 active cases in India alone, right? And, and India is a huge, uh, you know, country. It has a very, very large population. Um, So, yeah, that... that there, there it goes. And it, that's why, you know, you had these different riots in Delhi. You had all these different things that was taking place um, in these different, uh, you know, throughout the Middle East, uh, dealing with these heathen, nation, heathen nations. All right. And it's going to get to the point where these different individuals are going to start having to eat their cats and dogs. They're, because what? Like I said, the, the government is losing its grips on taking care of each and every citizen. You know, the welfare, you know, it's going to be a slashing on welfare. That's why even now you see these different politicians there. Um, you know, what's one of the major things that's that's being uh, brought up in the Supreme Court is this. Um, this 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 uh, Affordable Care Act, you know, and uh, basically they're, they're speaking about, you know, if which Kamala Harris is one big pusher of keeping the Affordable Care Act intact, her and Biden and Trump is looking to. Uh, you know, basically, uh, you know, take it out of, um, you know, take that policy out of the system, so to speak, you know, repeal it. And, you know, she was basically saying how many people that uh, are nutritionally deficient, so many people that have ailments and they're actually defending on the uh, Affordable Care Act, how many people are going to, uh, you know, with rare degenerative diseases, how many people are going to suffer if that... Uh, if the Affordable Care Act will be uh, overthrown. And that's just more and more of these numbers, these millions upon millions of people actually being hit hardest. And like I said, not only even here in the United States, it's other nations. And I just wanted to bring out this quick list of um, these different meat shortages, which this was pub published um, May the 5th, but it says, where's the beef? Some Wendy's stores run out, Costco limits purchases. Right, so Costco, Wendy's, and its various other, um, you know, food supply chains that are lacking their uh, proper amount of substance. And I'll just say this even for brothers, you know, get used to a a, a more vegan-based diet, man. You know, actually cutting out of it. You know, you should get your, your body and your spirit tra trained for um, times where you're not going to be able to eat, you know, the, the best, so to speak. You know, Jake want to eat you know, meat all day and every day, you know, you want to go out to eat all day, every day. And you, you know, you, you actually condition yourself from that lifestyle, but it's going to, hey, it's going to be times where, you know, even the mental Lord might have to miss a meal, you know? So it's all about what type of mindset we're in when this stuff starts to really take off. Cause it's bad now, but like I said, we're in the, we're in a land that's under uh, more security, America is more uh, secure as of now than a lot of these different nations. You know, you, um, you know, some Jakes don't even be needing a job and they still doing doing uh, fairly well in America. You know, keeping it uh, honest, some people are still doing well just off of unemployment. Unemployment is still attacked. You know, it's, a lot of people are still getting their, you know, their wick, their own Section 8. But people are getting thrown out of their houses and their residence. So... You know, we have to, uh, you know, observe all and, and condition our minds, like I said, for the uh, worst case scenario, because what we're leading, everything is leading to the worst case scenario. The scriptures speak about how, you know, the men of the Lord will be tried, Jeremiah 19 and 9. And I will cause them to eat the flesh of their sons and the flesh of their daughters, and they shall eat every one the flesh of his friend in the siege and straightness wherewith their enemies and they that seek their lives shall straighten them. Right. And this was a famine that took place within the scriptures, you know, and we're going to see these same, you know, scripture says those things that were written aforetime were written for our learning. So we've seen these famines take place all the way, you know, 2,000, 3,000 plus years ago. We're going to see these same events take place now. All right. Luke 21 and 9. But when you shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. And we're hearing of these World War Three, you know, uh, Iran, Russia, China, the United States. And we're in the midst of war. 
whether it's trade wars, you know, um, in, you know, intelligence wars. <coughs> All of these are uh, forms of wars. The scripture says, be not terrified for these things must first come to pass. But the end is not by and by. Right. So we're not at the exact end yet, you know, but we're marching closer and closer to the end times where the Lord will actually, as it is written, visit the world upon which is made, which he made. Then said he unto them, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Right. So these nations are going to rise against each other for what? They're not going to rise, rise to each other for negotiation. They're going to rise to each other with a sword in their hand. All right. And the modern day sword is the gun. You know, you have these war planes, these fighter jets. You have these, uh, you know, you, the Marine troops, sh naval ships. You know, they're going to basically open up the caches and they're going to, uh, you know, bring out the big guns for this third world's war, as it is written within the Bible, the Holy Bible. It says, and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places. You know, continuing on. And famines. We just, that's it. 55 million people uh, are, you know, basically close to actually being in a state of uh, starvation, man. You know, some people live in paycheck to paycheck. Some people don't even, are not even getting a check right now. All right. They're getting thrown out of their houses in the streets and they're living. On, that's why, you you know, you have uh, YouTube pages like the Invisible People where, you know, you have people to interview and where are they living? But under the bridge. They're living under the bridge. They're living in vacant locations. They're basically digging out of the trash, whether they're in San Francisco, certain parts of California, certain parts of New York, Chicago, here in Georgia, all over the United States, Africa, the Middle East, South America. That's it. And what it says in pestilences, which a pestilence is a, a large outbreak that infects people. All right. You know, and we're seeing the infection of what? The COVID, COVID-19 infection. You know, you had these different flu outbreaks. You know, you had swine flu, you had bird flu. These are examples. And see, in today's time, we see the COVID-19. This is one of the main uh, uh, pestilence, which is bringing about a famine. That's the, that's the bad thing with prophecies. One prophecy will come to pass and it'll start a chain reaction that'll uh, bring out more prophecies. And you can't you can't upset these prophecies, man. It says in fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. Right. And one of the greatest signs that's going to be from heaven is the coming of the son of man, which is Yahweh Shah. All right. It says that he's going to come with healing in his wings. And he's also coming for death, destruction, carnage and mayhem. All right. To punish those that punished his people. You know, because where where is Jake right now in the projects, the hoods, the lowest parts of the earth? Hey, the world has to suffer for for how the world treated the uh children of the most high the scripture says that he that touch of you touch the apple of my eye they touch the lord's chosen so they have to be touched and it's only justice that's how the lord uh pushes out you know righteousness which comes in the form of indignation and in fact i'm gonna read this and i'm gonna close out isaiah 66 15 for behold the lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flame of fire. For by fire and for by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Right, so we got to get ready, you know, get our spirits right, trim our lamps, watch, you know, make sure that we have that, uh, that midnight oil burning, <laughs> you know, actually, uh, you know, getting our spirits prepared for the times that we're living in. Because the times that we're living in are extremely, um, you know, bad, so to speak. And they're going to get worse and worse and worse. The time of Jacob's trouble, but it says at the same time, in the same token, that he shall be uh, delivered from it. So I'll, hopefully, you brother, edify them and by giving all praise and honor and glory unto Yahweh, by Shema, 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 by Shema,